it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers we are zooming in and focusing in on an important aspect to understanding the personality disorder that is known as covert narcissism or even overt narcissism malignant narcissism or even the psychopathic antisocial personality disorder and yes we are putting those all those spectrum of disorders into the topic today because there is an undergirding element which is comorbid I feel with both of these personality types and that is the presence of rage or hostility how it manifests, how it transmutes, how it's communicated, how it is relayed varies with each person as well as the severity and personality dynamics of each of these individuals. As you know, there is no one size fits all when we're talking about this. All you in you know, YouTube land, all the viewers, all the empowered harmonizers, you all have your own specific set of circumstances. You have your all your own elements with which you have encountered these individuals. But what's undergirding it all is the malignancy or the pathology or the presence of an issue which we're going to kind of focus in and zoom on and boil down right now which we are calling rage or hostility. This can also be exhibited as aggression. This is known as hostile, hostility or rage because of the force, the negative force, the anger, the disapproval, the disappointment, the, the glaring looks that are included with this emotion, this negative energy in motion. And to understand this element is to understand how it is communicated and used as a tool of manipulation it is also important to understand the cause that creates this effect in your life and then how you have transmitted it, how you have coped, how you have personally dealt with this energy in this person, in life, etc. So to understand the hostility and how it develops in its role in the development of codependency how someone who has empathy in their life, how they cope or deal with this negative energy. Whether it's in a romantic relationship, an intimate relationship, a family relationship, a work relationship with this malignant type who can be an emotional bully, trying to treat you like a pushover, but namely, it is understanding that it is a tool of manipulation. It is a tool that disguises them from their own insecurity and their own inferiority. It's what they put out there out front in order to push and get what they want. And there is an experience that, you know, it is to understand that the problem with both of these classes, and I have viewers who say, peace and harmony, you can't put these together. Well, I'm sorry, but yes, we are, because what is indicative what is the pronouncement and the you know indicator that professionals use to diagnose, and we're not diagnosing or treating here, but it is to understand that it is the lack of empathy that characterizes both of these malignant personality disorders. Lack of empathy, lack of empathy. I'm gonna say it again, <laughs> lack of empathy. It is not there, it's not happening, it's not going on. They don't have the capacity to understand or feel what you feel. They don't care. It does not matter to them. It is irrelevant. It is not in the picture. It is not guiding how they influence or treat you. There is a lack of empathy. It's like if they go off the rails, if they go off into blow up land, they don't care that they're damaging you, destroying you. It's like having a four-wheel Jeep and going off-road and just annihilating flowers, trees, shrubs, whatever it is that they can mull over. That is like the aggressive driver. That is like the aggressive nar narcissist who has a lack of empathy. They don't care 
or feel for the life that they are damaging or you know plowing over when they go off when they go into rage whether it's quiet rage covert rage you know ignoring you withholding treating you like an underdog or whether it's the overt type that's like overtly you know um insulting you berating you belittling you um you know you know never complimenting you oh you know you got your hair done i can tell I mean, anything has to do with the negativity, and that's really boiled down to the element of hostility and rage. It's a quiet hostility. Um, you know, um, oh, is that new? It is showing disapproval. You know, if you got a new uh, piece of clothing, you know, it's never, oh, you look nice. It's, oh, is that new? Um, you know, I had another viewer who has a, a big house in the um, California area, and, you know, he tells me about how people always question him. They never compliment him on his choices of house or where he lives. They're always like, you know, oh, you live there. Even though he has a million dollar house, you know, he lives in a, in a beautiful area. It's just like there is a subtle cut down. It's a way to show disapproval. There is a rage, a hostility. And to understand this and to understand your role, I feel it's very important. I'm developing a concept that the experience of being in um, what a viewer so aptly stated as an IT relationship, um, an intended target relationship. In other words, these individuals, because of their lack of empathy, will be able to align or misalign themselves with others who have a, a weakness or a preponderance in their eyes of empathy. In other words, these are the people who stop to listen who care about these individuals, who love them or find that they're in a family, a work environment, or a long-term lover relationship, that these people end up taking too much from them. You know, taking the insults, taking the cut downs, you know, letting it wash over you in one ear or out the other, or forgiving them, just releasing them. Um, you know, just saying, well, they had a rough go at life, you know, and then just explaining the insults away. Uh, they don't really mean it. I can put up with it. This is what love must be. So there's a way of just sort of letting it go that in, ends up happening with the individuals who then, you know, become enmeshed and become like a viewer. I love that the statement that they made is the, uh, the uh, intended target. So as you can say, a target is not a positive place to be. If someone's targeting you, um, you know, for uh, sort of pre, if we look at that um, concept of target, and we really do go deep here because it's my intention to open it up wide so you can really see it, understand it, and then say, okay, I get it, peace and harmony, to grow your awareness so that you are empowered to understand the dynamic so you can get out of the way. You can get out of the relationship, you can let it go, you can you know, get it out of your system. It's so important to really sort of get it out of your system. And that is what healing is. It is a learning journey. This is all information that I have written down already this morning in terms of, you know, the, the book that I'm writing and the content that I'm developing. So healing is learning. And so you have to really be a student in this. You have to be able to be receptive, open, and learn it and apply it. So I love that the viewer stated it is the um, intended target. So in other words, there's a pre-meditation, there's a pre-calculation of this person who they are projecting a lot of their negativity and hostility on and then targeting for supply, whether it's someone who's psychopathic, who is truly lacking of conscience, lacking of morality, lacking of remorse or guilt is very superficial. All they want to do is have power over, manipulate, and control others to a ruthless degree, or whether it's a pathological narcissist who can lie, treat you superficially, um, very, you know, uh, very superficial behavior, what I would call very gratuitous communication. Um, in other words, they're just communicating as a front. They have no genuineness. There is no reality. They're just communicating as a passing by in other in order to kind of keep you at bay um, but there's this undergirding hostility which eventually when you get the distance 
you can really see through. Um, and it is to understand that the wounding that is um, arrived at when you are in this position is really what I understand. I want you to understand that it has nothing to do with you as a weak individual. It has nothing to do with you as an inferior individual. It is only their hostility, their anger, their rage, which you have basically been in the line of fire of. In other words, you have been the you know the IT, the intended target. And but and also, it is my understanding that I want to. I'm kind of trademarking a role or position that I call you find yourself in the involved observer role. I O. Um, the involved observer role or the IW involved witness role so you're kind of once you become an observer or witness <clears throat> to these types of individual if you're empathetic you will inherently feel their sadness their sorrow their pain their own sense of insecurity inferiority in other words you want to lift them up you want to help them you're there for them through thick thing you know better or indifferent you know better or worse but it ends up becoming more worse because they take advantage of you especially through this rage and hostility that you are then the recipient of the reciprocal of and so you become <clears throat> as someone with empathy heart feeling sentientiousness you become involved you become involved you become enmeshed you become ingratiated to them and you know you end up taking on their mood lability their um, heartlessness you end up taking that on and then involving yourself with them hence the role not only of codependent but I want you to understand kind of a new term um, that I am developing and that I understand through my work and learning and study of this is that you then become really not only codependent but an involved witness. You become an, an absol uh, involved observer. So not only codependent being a victim of, a target of, but you, you, know, you really are just more of a witness. In other words, there's no intention of really having sort of a really healthy relationship. You're like an involved bystander, if you will. And so um, this becomes the wounding element because you are there just sort of like to save the drowning. You end up going down with them. In that hostility, the way that it is communicated is never a good thing because you take on that negativity and that blame as internalizing, you soak it up like a sponge, especially if you're a child, especially if you're a young adult, especially if you're a wounded adult, especially if you've had traumatic relationships before, um, this, you know, you fit right into it. It's like the Cinderella shoe. Your foot slips into it like magic. Next thing you know, you're in a relationship with another narcissist. Whoops, I did it again, like the old Britney Spears song. Oops, I did it again. How did this happen? Well, the you know the glass slipper, male or female, you slide right into it like you sashay into it, like a graceful dance. You're just like here they are. We, we, mesh, we mesh together, we fit, we've got good chemistry. Look at me, I'm an involved witness. Look at me, I'm an, um, an involved observer. I O, I W, I've got it written on my forehead. I know how to do this. I Here I go, oops, I'm doing it again. So it is because there is a lack of awareness <clears throat> which gets you into this repetitive cycle of getting re-attracted, re-involved, witnessing once again this type of anger, this hostility in these manipulative individuals, which is not good for you. It is not good for you. It is not good to be involved and to be the recipient of a lot of negative energy. It becomes toxic. It is like the poison in a drink. It's like the poison in a chocolate martini. You know, the chocolate, the cream, the syrup, the spices, whatever it is that they're putting in there, the fancy glass, the fancy stir, the you know chocolate shavings, the whipped cream, you can be, ooh, ah, that's like the love bombing. Yes, we're doing an analogy here. But then you take a sip of it, ooh, this is intoxicating. 
you know, in a, in the cream, the chocolate, the chocolate shavings, the whipped cream. I hope you guys are laughing right now. But it's like that's like the love bombing, and then there comes the poison, and then you become an you know, the poison is taking on <clears throat> that charm, that sort of, you know, um, that charisma, you know, the way that they move, the way that they talk, the way they manipulate you. Those are part of the love bombing, and they know it works. They do it, and they've done it again and again and again, and that is how you find yourself in a relationship with these individuals until it weighs too heavy on you and you can't take it anymore. You're like, what is going on? This person is not here for me the way that I am. It is to understand. And then you feel the toxicity again. It's like the alcohol. It is like an alcohol to your soul. This sort of, you know, it, it's, you know, you're trying to you know, you're, it's the, the devalue and the discard, which eventually is corrupting your liver, is corrupting your kidneys, is corrupting your mind. You have mood lability, you have paranoia, you can't take it in other relationships, you can't sleep, see through clearly. It's the fog. If you've been in this with a psychopath, it is even worse. I mean, you're out of your mind. You've lost it entirely. The wheels have come off the vehicle. You know, you are derailed. You are like somewhere way outskirts. But I'll have you know that your internal spirit, your compass is like a, a sheer bolt of lightning that is coming from the heavens above miles and miles and miles and miles and light years away into your soul. Your inner guiding spirit is that strong once you kind of understand and get an awareness and away from this hostility that's been negative in you um, that has been you've been an involved target once you intended uh, target once you step away and, and, and get that flushed out of your system so your body can begin to process and detox um, you're able to see the relationship the individual for who they are and what it is you need to get this distance. You need to go the night no contact. You need to go the, um, you know, you need to purge them and get them out of your system to see them clearly. You need to get the boundaries and the standards. But before we get any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the viewers who comment here on the channel. You guys are so intelligent. You're so articulate. You are so strong spirited. You have an indomitable spirit. I am so impressed with the content of the viewer comments and the discussions that have uh, been taking place in the videos. You guys are a smart, creative, intelligent, wonderful bunch. You guys are really um, amazing um, with your own insights, not only into your relationships, but now what you're doing to self-care and sort of put your own gears into motion. And so what I want to understand and have you understand that therapeutically, therapy, um, which we're, I don't know if we're giving that here, but it's the goal of the channel to help you work through these relationships and become an empowered harmonizer to be energized, detox from the wound. So you are not a walking wounded, you're a walking empowered harmonizer. You are healed from the top down. You are healed from the center out. You are in touch with the higher energy the, it's like your guardian angel, your guardian spirit, which is coming from miles and miles and miles above you that was there when you got derailed. So it's kind of like, whoa, you know, the energy is with you like a lightning bolt. You see it jig, jig, jag, you know, your lightning is, but it's like all the way to your center. Your higher guide has been with you the entire time, but it's now time to recognize and acknowledge it and say, hello there, higher self, OMG, I am so glad to meet you. I'm so glad to feel you. I'm so glad to be with you. Oh my God, you give yourself the hello, welcome back hug, and you reintroduce yourself to life. You reintroduce yourself to the elements. You're like, um, you are going through positive orderly direction change positive thinking, positive behavior. You reintroduce your healthy, whole, intelligent, articulate self that can see clearly. You can see, 
you know, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I mean, you are like, I have my vision back. And even though you might not be wearing glasses or you never wore glasses or now you're wearing glasses, you can actually see now. You're actually like seeing life. You're actually seeing through your own eyes. And if you, even if you were wounded as a child, you know, you were born into this type of manipulation, hostility, anger, rage. You know, all that negativity was your life. That was your foundation. You're like, uh-uh. You know, sisters got a hammer, nails, and some new hardwood, man. We're building a new foundation. You're like, uh-uh. You know, son here, I've got my own saw. I've got my own workshop. I ain't living in that lava pool. I am out of there. You know, been there, done that, got the scars, got the burn, got the blisters. It ain't pretty. I ain't sitting in the, you know, ah. Uh, you know, the, the, the Red Cross mobile no more. I'm freaking out of here. I've got a hammer and it's no little tiny one. Dun, dun, dun. I don't got no little tap hammer. I've got a, a big slugger. I've got a sludge hammer. I've got a jack hammer. I am making a new foundation and my new foundation runs deep. You cannot build a, a foundation out of hostility. It'll eventually be like just a house of cards or a house of crumbles it'll eventually fall apart and you'll feel homeless we've had viewers here who have been driven to homelessness poverty despair suicide you know on happy states okay that is what hostility and rage and the negativity of judgment will do for you it'll split you at your core like a quarter of wood with a saw they will take the hatchet of their hostility and try to separate you from yourself. Uh-uh, it ain't happening, it ain't hap It ain't going. We are not under that guillotine. We're not under the ax. I'm not under the emotional ax anymore. You will not project that and split me in, in two, in whole, in quarters, in twentieths. I ain't a millimeter, I am a whole individual. So when you realize that emerging through um, is building that new foundation out of peace, out of self-forgiveness, out of love. And you are now working on your own brain. You're now working on your own heart. You're now working on your own interests. <clears throat> You're now working on your own drives and not working on this individual. That is the problem with being in with these individuals is that you are constantly having to work on them their brain, their feelings, their needs, and not your own. So it is the taking back of the night, taking back of the day, taking back of your own cosmos, taking back of your own experience, and then recreating it. We're going to need to wrap up here, but I want you to understand how important it is for you to distinguish yourself from the hostility and rage that has been used to manipulate you and separate yourself from the feelings that have created this effect in your life and to realize that you are whole, you're strong, you are, you've been an involved witness. So it is to pull back and not to take on their negative pronouncements of you. Do not be labeled by these individuals. Do not, you know, put yourself under the judgment hammer of these individuals because that is how they manipulate is through judgment. And that judgment oftentimes is founded based in aggression, hostility, and the projecting of 